on Ash Wednesday, the prophet Joel proclaimed, return to the Lord. And the statement that the priest and those who gave us the ashes on our foreheads was repent and believe in the gospel. It is no surprising then that Jesus on this first Sunday of Lent makes the admonition again for us to repent and believe in the gospel. One of the spiritual benefits of the season of Lent is to respond to this admonition of Jesus to repent and believe in the gospel. And this admonition is for everyone. It is Socrates that says, an unexamined life is not worth living. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel, in the first letter of St. John, chapter 1, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So Lent invites us to repent and believe in the gospel. In the gospel, Jesus insists on this as ways by which we can return to the Lord and sustain our faith in God. In the first reading from Genesis 19, from Genesis chapter 9, God enters into a covenant with Noah. This covenant is God's covenant with all of creation. Covenant is an agreement of a relationship. This covenant is an everlasting covenant in which we all are encouraged to be conscious of God's commitment to all living beings. In the second reading, St. Peter emphasizes that God, that Christ suffered for sins once that he might lead us to God. God wants us to put to death the flesh in us and to live in the spirit. And this is an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, whom we celebrate today, and who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. We follow Jesus in this Lent ten season to the desert for 40 days in order that we may have a change of mind and attitude, having to look at things in a new way. And this opens us to the new thing that God is doing in our midst. Repenting, therefore, is a good way of devotedly joining in this Lent and always with God and with our Lord Jesus. It allows Jesus to show us the kingdom, to reveal himself in his resurrection, which is the most dramatic revelation of the rule of God over the world. We have probably asked ourselves, 
more than once since the beginning of this Lent. What will I do for Lent this year? There are many things we can do. The church prescribes for us fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. And all help us to look at Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. When we do these Lenten good deeds with devotion, we are able to sustain our faith and relationship with God in Jesus our Lord. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts, and may his word bear fruits in our lives through Christ our Lord.